Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the bald explorer, out on another walk. And today, on this beautiful, sunny October day, I find myself in Lawton, in East Sussex. I'm going to find out more about Lawton. I'm here by the church, which we hope to go and have a little investigation. But I have a wonderful guest who's going to tell me a little about himself and uh, about the church and the village because he was born here and lived here in his formative years. I'm pleased to introduce Eric Wilkins. Hello, Eric. Hello. Nice to meet you. So first of all, um, Lawton. Where is Lawton? If you could just put it on the map. For well, people. it's about midway between Lewis and Halsham. Sort of more or less due north of, of Bent Cabin in the centre of the Downs there. I'm not quite sure which town is, is due south of us on the coast. Um, so it's about 14, 14 miles from Brighton, if I remember rightly, and about the same from Eastbourne. And it's quite a rural bit of countryside oh, we're in, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. definitely rural. And, mm. and as I said at the beginning, you were born here? I was born in Brighton, but this is where I spent all my early life. Right. In fact, I nearly didn't because I got pneumonia. I was born two months premature. I nearly got I got pneumonia, and they thought they were going to lose me. And my my father in those days got on his bike and rode to the doctors over at East Hoathly, which is about two or three miles away. Right. On a wild night, and the doctor came out. It's always a wild night. He came <laughs> here and sat me on his knee, gave me a bit of milk and brandy, and said. It's all I could do for you, Bill. Golly. And I was subsequently known as Bill in the family for some considerable years. Oh, right. Oh, <laughs> how amazing. <laughs> now, your father was a, a master craftsman. Tell me about Oh, absolutely. He did. he did a proper apprenticeship in wheelwriting. And uh, he could. He, he said when he retired, he retired at about 61, 73, just coming up. And he said he thought if he was given the time and the materials, but he needed a lot of time, he could still lay it and build a Sussex wagon. And, and when you say a Sussex wagon, these are the old fashioned with wagons the, that you'll see the, in the uh, old books. Yeah, with the shafts on the front. They, of course, originally they were all horse drawn. And uh, you've got the swivel shaft on the front of the two smaller wheels, big wheels at the back. Um, quite a colossal thing. Yes. And he could make every bit of them. Could he? And all by hand, not by machine? Well, absolutely by hand. Nothing, I mean, not even a lathe, not even a foot turn. Really? Anything. And yet turned out the hubs, the valleys for the wheels, the spokes, and those spokes were shaped, as you probably know, into the valley and across and into the hub, and that was all mortised and tenoned in, and that had to be right. So he must have been a big influence on your life. Uh, yeah, in many ways, although I never followed in his footsteps. What, what did you do, Eric? I was actually a structural engineer. Right. I got into a, a place in Lewis, East Sussex Engineering then, that replaced every arm works. And I went on the structural side and I learned to be a draftsman and subsequently I was a, a structural design engineer. But your formative years were here at Lawton Absolutely and we're yeah. looking across... I left Lawton at uh, the age of 21 to do national service in the RAF. Right. Well, we'll get on to that in a second. Yep. Um, but these cottages, which have, you say, have changed quite dramatically. That we're oh, looking. yes. I think now, as far as I can see, it looks as if they've divided them into three. It was a row of five cottages and they were very, very much more basic than what you see now. Yes. As so, as so much it's different you know. the the uh, toilet facilities were out the back across the yard and if you needed to go out there in the winter it wasn't funny no i'm told <laughs> it was supposed to be one of the the stinkiest villages in sussex well Is that i a think name? that's perhaps overdoing it yeah. because i think a lot of people must have been in the same position but it just depended how people worked because people worked like billy ho in those days and our toilets i always thought they never spout. Yes. They were always emptied and disinfected. And at the back, there's water was supplied by a well. A well, a hand, hand cranked, hand -cranked buckets. <laughs> uh, great place for setting jellies and things like that when it was cold and oh, it right, was warm yeah. in the summer. And, and as you said earlier, before we were filming, a well that provided you with um, not just water. But little living creatures. Oh well, it had it had leeches and um, 
and uh, newts in it, great big dark newts. I used to fish up sometimes, but uh, when my father bought this row of five cottages, when he sold the cottages, one of the people who moved in, oh, this water's no good, this, 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 this is, and in the summer it would come up muddy if it got right down, but yes. it never let us down, and even served cottages and the vic vicarage over here. But um, they, he, they, he insisted on having the water analysed, and it came back. 100 percent. Yeah. Let's take a little stroll down towards the church because obviously every community has its church and we have one here. Would you mind um, doing the gate? I've got my hands full with the camera and the and the microphone and we'll we'll take a little stroll down here. Just behind us actually we can see the the, um, the stump of a an old yew tree and I gather you said that that was around when that you were That was here. there when I was a child. Yeah. Back in the Certainly. 30s. Yeah. Can as we a... just digress as we pass James Duke's tomb? Yes tomb of course. Because the elder of the James Dukes I think it is was Lord Mayor of London at one time. Oh right oh okay. And uh, there is a plaque in the church. Which I think so there we are the Lord Mayor of London came from here or retired well, here? Well he uh, I guess he retired here. Came from Montrose originally. Oh right. right. So yeah, so what anyway. was it What was it like living um, through the war? Well, my earliest memories of the war, I went out into the fields at the back of these cottages with my brother one day, and of course I was quite a little thing then. Yes. Well, I was born 34, 39, I was five. Oh, thereabouts, it must have been early 1940, I think. And I looked up at this big plane flying up in the sky and I said, look, it's got crosses on the wings. Oh, right. And it was one of the big... Fokker Wolf patrol bombers. Oh gosh. Just come over and get in, in front and so on. Uh, then the next thing was of course the night raids on London and they used to come right across here. You could actually see the glow in the sky from London. Could you? Uh, from, uh, the, from the fires and as soon as I heard the German bombers coming I was up in my bedroom at the back down into under the end of Ingle Nook and I stayed there until they came back. Was it terrifying? And when they came back, of course, they scattered odd bombs. Yes. We've got one down there and one just over there. We had a few odd explosives around here. But, um, but nobody around here got hit. Oh, there was a, the, the um, school got a bit of a fright, I think, the schoolhouse. But later on in the war, in the, in, towards the end, in the 1944, the flying bombs, the doodle bugs well, came after, over. The other, the other little memory I have is in the Battle of Britain. Oh, right. Um, and uh, that lasted, I was surprised, I looked this up and it says it lasted three weeks, three months and three weeks. But uh, I went up to the top of Lawton to see a hurricane that had come down upside down. In a, in a oh wow, field. I bet that was a spectacle. So that was a bit of a... Yes. We had dog fights and all that sort of thing yes. to watch and that yes. sort of thing. Sometimes it was quite exciting, otherwise a bit frightening. And then, um, yeah, well, when the doodlebugs came in 44, the great tragedy there was that the, uh, um, the fighter base at Deanland at Ripe, that was there then, they used to go up and try and knock the, knock the doodlebugs down before they got to London, of course. And they put one down up Shortgate Way, north, of Lord, north end of Lawton, and uh, knocked out a row of cottages and five people. Ah. And one, one of whom was our postman's wife. Oh, that's a that's a uh, real shame. What yeah. a tragedy! Right towards the end of the war, a flying fortress crash landed in the fields just beyond the cottages there, and the Yanks took us through it. And uh, so that was quite. So yeah. So oh, so you've got to you've got to look inside yeah. the flying fortress yeah. after it's crashed. Oh, mm -hmm. amazing! And and as a young lad, that must have been very very thrilling. Oh yeah. 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 So we've got the church behind us, Saint Mike. Right. Uh, all all saints, isn't all it? All saints. Yes. Yeah. And I think you said uh, that you were a were in the choir. I was a chorister there for a sh relatively short time. I used to read the lessons and wear a, a white frilled collar and with a black cassock and a white serp. Oh, amazing! Little angel. <laughs> <laughs> but it and I'm sure you were that, a little. Didn't last that wonderfully long. Ah. I became an agnostic after that, and returned to the church when we had our children in the 60s. 
So the church itself is quite old. I think you said something like 1120 uh, initially, and you can like see some of the church. older, older stonework. But it looks like the Victorians have made alterations on the church. Foundation stone laid by Gilbert D'Aquila, Lord of the Eagle, in, don't ask me who that was, but <laughs> in 1229. Well, um, Eric, it's been lovely to talk to you. We only have a short time on these welcome. videos. Um, there's anything else I want, needed to tell you? I think we've gone through quite a bit, haven't we? One I think we other. have, yeah. It's absolutely fascinating. I told you about my dad, I had to bring my dad into it. Yes, well, I, I, he's a very important yeah, fellow in your life. Yeah, I over most of the points that I had in mind. Well, thank you very much, Eric. Well, it's thank been you. A, it's been an absolute joy. I hope it's been of some interest. Oh, I'm sure it is. And for those of you watching, if you did find it of interest, don't forget to leave a comment. And if you haven't, do subscribe. But join me again on another one where I'll be going out for another walk, maybe meeting somebody else. But until then, take care and thanks for watching. Thanks, Eric. Thank really enjoyed it.